during this session, we are going to show you projects based on creativity and humour that have absolutely changed the world positively. Maybe slightly irreverent examples of the power of humour and creativity. And obviously, as an organisation, we specialise in social and environmental impact. That's, that's the core of everything we do. That's what we're interested in. And the first project that I want to share with you hasn't come from our community, but I want to sh share it to you because it's absolutely genius. I think it's genius. It was done for uh, the Metro train line, I think, in Australia. And you may or may not know this, but there are thousands of deaths globally of kids um, and young people who play on railway lines. And it's a really difficult thing to tackle. And it, it, it's, it's a very, very difficult issue to engage with because it's a serious issue, but you've also got to appeal to young people. And this project was created, it's kind of quite dark, but it was genius. I think it's genius. And it ha had more than 20, 200 million views globally. So I'm going to run it. I hope you enjoy it. And I really, really hope it doesn't offend anyone. Set fire to your hair Poke a stick at a grizzly bear Eat medicine that's out of date Use your private parts as piranha bait Dumb ways to die So many dumb ways to die Dumb ways to die So many dumb ways to die Get your toast out with a fork, do your own electrical work. Teach yourself how to fly. Eat a two-week-old unrefrigerated pie. Dumb ways to die. So many dumb ways to die. Dumb ways to die. So many dumb ways to die. By the psycho killer. Scratch a drug dealer's brand new ride Take your helmet off in outer space Use a clothes dryer as a hiding place Dumb ways to die What's this red button do? Dumb ways to die So many dumb ways to die Dumb ways to die So many dumb ways to die Dress up like a moose during hunting season Disturb a nest of wasps for no good reason Stand on the edge of the train station platform Drive around the boom gates at a level crossing Run across the tracks between the platforms They may not rhyme but they're quite possibly safe around trains a message from metro so i hope you agree that that was really entertaining uh, and fun and for me what's incredibly interesting is that they addressed lots and lots of different issues so although they were focused on trains and the issue around railways but they also included lots and lots of other content that would help kids understand it's not great to put super glue in your mouth for example or hide in a, in a tumble dryer so that's all very good and well. It got 
billions and millions rather of hits, 200 million hits, and it, they went on to create gaming and all sorts of things from that. But not all of us have the resource of a big agency and a big budget to create something like that. So what I want to show you now is examples of people from our community that have actually done something fun and that has created impact in the world. So some of this content is a bit adult. I wanted to do a bit of a public information notice before we launch into it. If you guys have got little kids running around, you know, maybe put your headphones on, or if you think that it's inappropriate in any way, please, um, you can switch off now. That's all cool. Um, but there's sort of quite a lot of uh, adult and sort of sexual content in some of the things that we're going to discuss. But it's, it's very gentle. I just wanted to say that. So the first project that I want to share with you was around the issue of equality. And this was a real project that was created by some students who entered our awards. It's the most hilarious, brilliant way of using an existing platform to illustrate what, what isn't right in the world. Now, we quite often get projects sent to us that um, are kind of built from scratch. So someone might create an app or um, want to reinvent the wheel. Our sort of message around this is that you have a look at what already exists and see if you can hack into things to get your message out. And we're going to show another example of that in a minute. But I'm going to just run this, this campaign. It's really clever and really funny. Female or male? Can't tell. Neither can we. But Instagram only allows men to show their nipples while banning women's. Censoring women's bodies only serves to objectify them. So to challenge this idea and expose the irony of Instagram's policy, we created genderless nipples. We posted close-ups of nipples without any gender-revealing indicators and encouraged others to submit their own nip selfies. When Instagram deleted a male nipple, thinking it was female, it started a conversation, a big conversation. We hit the front page of Reddit, and even celebrities joined our protest. In just one week, we gained over 50,000 followers and over 1,000 nipple donations. Our nipples became too famous for even Instagram to censor. So, while Instagram hasn't changed their corporate policy yet, they're allowing the genderless nipples account to stay up. Over 70,000 people helped spark a global conversation about gender equality on social media. We had no budget and no media plan. We just had the one thing that every single person on the planet has. A nipple. So you can see what those guys did. It was really, really clever. And that's an absolutely true story. They got 70,000 impressions in a really short period of time. They got loads and loads of uh, media press and they had no budget and no media plan. So we tend to work a bit like that as well. We have very little budget and absolutely no media plan and we've managed to, <laughs> to build a global platform. So don't be afraid, I suppose, of doing something kind of brave and slightly risky against something that you really is really important, like equality. This next project I'm going to show you is kind of a branding project. It's also an advertising campaign around the really serious issue of plastics. I believe these guys were from the Netherlands, but it, it was it's a kind of a branding project, but it's also the way they put it together is really lovely. I'll just run the film for you. How can we use graphic design to create awareness about the increasing harm plastics are doing to our oceans? We decided to start with one seemingly innocent plastic product used at parties, bars and restaurants. Straws. They are one of the worst plastic polluters in our oceans. And in the UK alone, 23 million plastic straws are discarded daily. To change this, we created an alternate, fun and eco-friendly straw brand, St. Raw's. The art direction, tone of voice and campaign approach aim to balance the seriousness of the issue with a playful, 
and inviting brand universe that draws people in. Through this brand, we can attract attention to the issue. Our campaign engages people in the environmental debate whilst offering them a real solution. We want to educate and inspire our audience to do something, starting with buying a better alternative and signing our petition to ban plastic straws. With 100,000 signatures, the issue will be discussed in Parliament in the UK. We believe that if we can change people's habits with something as small as a plastic straw, it can be the stepping stone to change their habits with all kinds of single-use plastics. So you can hopefully see that that is so fairly amusing, the way they've used Saint Raw's you know, in the brand name. And just, again, a really, really lovely, engaging campaign concept around a serious issue. Now, this project we always show when we go into universities and places because it's another example of kind of what I think we do as an organisation, which is create impact. So this project was sent to us a few years ago. Uh, we loved it and we ended up building it into something real in the world. They identified that sexually transmitted diseases were going through the roof. Cases of HIV were also going up at the time. And there was a lot of talk about it being because of the rise of dating apps. And so what they did was they created two fake, the idea was that they would create two fake profiles on Tinder, use two avatars of some handsome looking people. I like to think that the girl was called Claire Midia, but I don't think she was, or the chap should have been called Herpes, but they used the names of sexually trans transmitted disease as the avatar avatar's profile. And then using Tinder's GPS system, if someone swiped unconsciously, yes to someone called Claire Midia without even bothering to read that girl's name, they would then be sent a message, like a public health message, and also using the GPS system where their nearest sexually, um, sexual health clinic was. So I'll run the movie, it's a bit clunky, um, and then I'll tell you what we did with the project afterwards. So that was the concept. Um, they sent us that project, I uh, can't remember what year it was, maybe a couple of years ago, and we just thought it was genius. So what we did, our community, we started reaching out to a lot of different dating apps from Tinder. We managed to get hold of the email address of the guy, I can't remember his name, Sean someone in um, on the west coast of America. We got hold of his email address. We wrote to him and we said this was a really good idea and that they should do it as an organisation because especially at that time, Tinder was getting loads of bad press from the US around this issue. And we thought this would be great because they could be educating people not to not use Tinder, but to be responsible. We contacted a number of other dating um, apps and really sadly, none of them was willing to sort of be brave enough to take this idea on board. Now, because we consider ourselves to be positive, creative activists and we are very mischievous, we were going to let this stop us. So what we did was we got in touch with Brooke, which is a sexual health charity that's based here in the UK. They work with 16 to 24 year olds 
And we showed them the concept and we said, we want to do this as a bit of viral content. Um, are you up for it? And they went, yeah, why not? Let's do it. So what we did was we launched the campaign over Christmas because STIs, sexually transmitted uh, infections or diseases, go up in January. So probably because people get, you know, hammered and aren't conscious around their, their behaviour. So that's why we launched it at that particular time. We did lots of research and we launched this campaign and what we did basically was we got a whole load of people from our communities. We chose a whole load of different dating apps and we created fake avatars and we worked with one of our guys in advertising and, and the students and, and lots of volunteers. And we did this live. You know, we weren't using algorithms. So we had a script. We created all these different fake profiles and I can't remember exact date, I think it was the first week of December, we basically launched it. Every time this went out, someone in the studio or in our community kind of went boom. Um, we had a hashtag that was called X, uh, Safe Exmouth, and we got a lot of responses. Um, we've, we, we videoed this content in order then to use it for a social media campaign. Quite a few people were very happy uh some people weren't uh with this next guy i think i don't know if it was a guy but he actually thought that we were an algorithm it would have been great if we were because we could have impacted hundreds of thousands of people um in in, in, a, in a live sense so the lesson here i think is that was hilarious that was hilarious for us to do it was actually really fun i had two avatars and i was having real life conversations and it was really fun to see and get different people's responses we were shut down um within a couple of days in some cases less um on the different platforms but I think the kind of, again, the lesson here is that you don't need to necessarily create a new app or a new system. You can use what already exists. You can use technology that already exists to create um, fun content that really can make a massive difference. <laughs>